The global cyber attack has shaken my faith in our institutions to protect my personal information. Go to pulse.msnbc.com slash America. Tell us whether you agree or disagree with that. Let's go to Naveed Jamali, a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. He's also a former FBI double agent and the author of How to Catch a Russian Spy. Naveed, you know, we got the big headline is it, it's not over. Uh, it, typically, when we talk about these large scale, and this is grander than the other ones you and I have talked about in the past, 150 countries, it, it seems to happen within days and then it's done. But we still don't know what will happen once folks start turning on their computers at work tomorrow. That's, that's a very good point, Richard. And it really begs the question, you know, in a case like this, who is responsible for combating it? Is it you and I, or is it, uh, is there, is it the government? Is it uh, individual companies? This is a question that's been sort of plaguing this, uh, you know, the Internet of Things. When you start having smart TVs and smart refrigerators as well as smartphones, um, the opportunity to compromise those devices has increased dramatically. And, you know, where does the yeah. responsibility and, to stop and, that lie? And that's a good question here, Naveed. Uh, you uh, formally being in the intelligence business, monitor this stuff, but the question is what happens after the red light starts blinking, uh, wherever it starts blinking, and then and what is done with that red light that's blinking? That's exactly right. So, you know, it, it, to draw a little bit of a parallel here, it's the question of, you know, the Russian investigation versus a, a counterintelligence operation. Ideally, on the government end, and certainly there's private security firms, you want to detect this kind of threat long before it actually happens. Right now, we're in reactive mode. So, you know, Microsoft took the, uh, the very unusual step of releasing patches. It should be noted that a lot of the systems that this affects are, are, are frankly, yeah. kind of older systems. So, again, we're in a reactionary mode, and yeah. what you want to be is on the offense, not, now, not uh, reacting. Well, you know, I, I, I've had conversations before that businesses are farther ahead than, if you will, government-related organizations or government agencies themselves because of the very issue you bring up, which is at the age of certain pieces of technology. <laughs> now, I was speaking with Eric Rosenbach just yesterday from the Department of Defense, and he was saying, hey, government's doggone good. We're good at this stuff. Uh, if we're so good at this, why is this happening? It's always a question of cost. I mean, that's, that's a big part of it. I mean, when you start seeing the systems that have been affected, it's not so much that those particular institutions, uh, the railway, parts of FedEx, were actually targeted. I think rather it's just the age of the, of the systems. Uh, the, 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 so, you know, yeah. look, there's an old saying, yesterday's technology, tomorrow, I mean, again, it's cost. You have to keep your systems current. You have to patch them. That's all cost in a lot of places, you know, when, especially when it comes to government, uh, to corporations, they sometimes try to cut corners here, and this is sometimes what happens. Okay, do we need to move it into just a different category, cyber terrorism? You know, that's a very good question. And I think when you look, when you start thinking about law enforcement, Russia, for example, there's no extradition treaty. So a lot of these people that sort of perpetrate these attacks, the, the kind of tentacles reaching back to a state sponsor is sometimes it's there, but it's very squishy. But nonetheless, a lot of these countries where these hackers reside are unwilling to give them up. In, in some cases, the revenue they bring in is, is, you know, kind of distributed back to the government. So from a legal perspective, yes, I mean, we need to figure out uh, how to get these people, how to certainly make an example of them. But it does raise a question of, you know, the sort of transnational threat, which is what we call it. You know, it, it might be in one country, but it's certainly not a, the, the place where these people sit is not the country they're often attacking. It's outside. Yeah, interesting point, I guess, overall is just that when we talk about digital warfare, we're still learning. I mean, that's the bottom we, line when we're looking at this. Naveed Jamali, as always, thank you, sir. Thanks for coming by on a Sunday.